सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द रेगुलेशन ऑफ फूड इनटेक सो इन द रेगुलेशन ऑफ फूड इनटेक बेसिकली थ्री हाइपोथैलमिक न्यूक्लियाई आर इन्वॉल्व द फर्स्ट वन ऑफ दैम इज़ द लैटरल हाइपोथैलमिक न्यूक्लियस विच इज़ ऑल्सो नोन एज द फीडिंग सेंटर दिस न्यूक्लियस रेगुलेट्स द फीडिंग द अमाउंट ऑफ फूड दैट वी टेक इन The second nucleus is the ventromedial nucleus, which is also known as the satiety center. This center, this nucleus regulates our satiety. It makes us feel that we are contempt. We have taken the ample amount of food. The last new nu arcuate nucleus. The arcuate nucleus controls the ventromedial nucleus, and through it, it controls the lateral hypothalamic nucleus. So, if we see the relation between the three nuclei, it is something like this. The lateral hypothalamic nuclei is inhibited by the ventromedial nucleus. So, this is our feeding center. This is our satiety center. and the arcuate nucleus controls the ventromedial nucleus both by um, stimulating it as well as inhibiting it by secreting a variety of substances so uh, now we are going to discuss about the lateral hypothalamic nucleus so as we know that it is the feeding center so if the lateral hypothalamic nuclei is removed the animal has no desire to eat so this uh, has been proved experimentally also the neurons of the lateral hypothalamic nuclei are tonically active means they are always active hence we are habitually starving we always have a desire to eat it is the ventromedial nucleus which keeps it suppressed as we have seen here that the ventromedial nucleus inhibits the lateral hypothalamic nucleus here we can see hence it is the ventromedial nucleus which keeps it suppressed this is to assure a continuous supply of food to the body because if the lateral hypothalamic nuclei was stimulatory it worked only if it stimulated then due to the loss of stimulation because of any reason or any defect in the body we may stop eating hence the lateral hypothalamic nuclei are tonically active this is a protective measure of the body now the next nuclei as we know is the ventromedial nucleus the ventromedial nucleus as we know is called the satiety center it gets stimulated when we are completely full and contempt by taking food so it was de uh, experimentally demonstrated by professor vk anand at drobek about its inhibitory nature what they did they stimulated the ventromedial nucleus with very high current that damaged it and as the ventromedial nucleus was damaged the experimental animal ate a lot of food and become obese so this sh shows the inhibitory nature of ventromedial nucleus on the feeding habit as we know there are two types of substances one are known as orexigenic and another are known as anorexigenic so orexigenic substances are responsible for increasing the food intake whereas anorexigenic substances are responsible for decreasing the food intake so as we know the third nuclei is the arcuate nuclei so the arcuate nuclei controls the ventromedial nucleus by secreting different kinds of substances some of them are orexigenic whereas others are anorexigenic so first coming to the anorexigenic substances so the anorexigenic substances secreted by the arcuate nucleus include cart that is caffeine amphetamine related hormone mch that is melanocyte concentrating hormone and agrp that is agouti related protein so these hormones activate the ventromedial nucleus that means they ultimately inhibit the lateral hypothalamic nucleus and this causes anorexia that means uh, a desire not to eat the arcuate nucleus also secrete neuropeptide y and orexin which directly stimulate the lateral hypothalamic nuclei and as the lateral hypothalamic nuclei are stimulated the person or the animal has a desire to eat so here we can see arcuate nucleus 
secretes CART, MCH, AGRP that stimulate the ventromedial nucleus which ultimately inhibits the lateral hypothalamic nucleus. And the arcuate nucleus also secretes neuropeptide Y and orexin that directly stimulate the lateral hypothalamic nucleus and hence they are orexigenic. So now coming to the chemical mediators which control food intake. So these are basically of two types, intrahypothalamic that are secreted inside the hypothalamus and extrahypothalamic that are secreted outside the hypothalamus. So the intrahypothalamic chemical mediators basically include neuropeptide Y and orexin A and B which are orexigenic that means they increase the food intake and it also includes CART and MCH as we already know CART is caffeine amphetamine related hormone and MCH is melanocyte concentrating hormone. They are anorexigenic and decrease the food intake. Other anorexigenic mediators that are secreted by the hypothalamus include CRH corticotroph releasing hormone CCK cholecystokine which is released in brain this is not the CCK that is secreted by the gut this is different the next is GLP glucagon like peptide and AGRP as we have already discussed above agouti related peptide now the extra hypothalamic mediators include ghrelin which is secreted by the auxentic cells in the stomach they are orexigenic leptin that are secreted by the adipose tissue which are anorexigenic we are going to discuss about leptin in the lipostatic theory also the next is the ACTH that is secreted by anterior pituitary which is anorexigenic cortisol and catecholamines which are also anorexigenic and they are secreted by the adrenal cortex as medulla the peptides which are secreted by the gut including GRP, CCK and motilin, they are also anorexigenic and glucagon and GLP, GLP-1 that are secreted by pancreas are also anorexigenic. So CRH, ACTH, cortisol, catecholamines which are released during stressful condition decrease the food intake. This is the reason why during stressful conditions we do not feel hungry. So all these hormones, the extra hypothalamic hormones which we have discussed are released in the blood and through the median eminence which we know remains outside the blood brain barrier, they reach the arcuate nucleus and the lateral hypothalamic nucleus. So as we have discussed the lateral hypothalamic nuclei, the ventromedial nuclei and the arcuate nuclei are involved in regulation of food intake. But along with it the limbic and the frontal cortex are also involved in food intake. How? They process the social training, behavior, memory, taste, smell, color and the environment in which we are taking the food. So along with the intake of food, these factors also influence the amount of food and whether we are going to take the food or not. The basic example is like if we are taking the same food in a good ambience or in a bad ambience, then the amount of food taken in varies. So these are basically regulated by the limbic and the frontal cortex of the brain. So whatever we have discussed, if we sum up that, then lateral hypothalamic nuclei is inhibited by the ventromedial nuclei which is in turn regulated by the arcuate nuclei that secretes both stimulatory as well as inhibitory substances. The stimulatory substances include CART and MCH which stimulate the ventromedial nucleus and ultimately inhibit the lateral hypothalamic nucleus and are hence anor anorexigenic and it also secretes neuropeptide Y and orexin which are orexigenic. Along with that leptin which is released by adipose tissue stimulate arcuate nucleus which ultimately inhibits lateral hypothalamic nucleus hence leptin is anorexigenic and ghrelin inhibits arcuate nucleus and hence it is orexigenic. Along with that we have discussed that gut peptides, catecholamines and stomach distension ultimately inhibit the lateral hypothalamic nucleus and are hence anorexigenic. Along with that the frontal and the limbic cortex also regulate the amount and the uh, whether we are going to take the food or not depending on a variety of other factors which are social training, behavior, memory, taste, smell, color and the environment in which we are going to take the food. So next we are going to discuss about the hypothesis for the regulation of food intake. 
सो इन दैट द फर्स्ट वन इज़ द ग्लूकोस्टैटिक थ्योरी अकॉर्डिंग टू द ग्लूकोस्टैटिक थ्योरी वन दे वंस देर इज हाइपर ग्लाइसेमिया दैट इज इंक्रीज अमाउंट ऑफ ग्लूकोज इन द ब्लड इट लीड्स टू सेटाइटी बिकॉज ग्लूकोज स्टिमुलेट्स द वेंट्रोमीडियल न्यूक्लियस दैट इनहिबिट्स द लैटरल हाइपोथेलमिक न्यूक्लियस एंड वंस देर इज हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया द रिवर्स प्रोसेस टेक्स प्लेस एंड वी फील हंगर However, in diabetes mellitus there is hyperglycemia, but still is uh, there is polyphagia and not satiety. This is because there is insulin deficiency. So now the neurons of the ventromedial nucleus require insulin for the action of glucose. Hence, if insulin is not there, glucose cannot stimulate the nuclei of the ventral uh, ventromedial nucleus of the hypothalamus, and hence there is no satiety. Hence, in case of diabetes mellitus, even in presence of large amount of glucose, there is no satiety. Next is the lipostatic theory. According to the lipostatic theory, the amount of adipose tissue in the body decides the food intake because the adipose tissue releases leptin. So the adipose tissue secretes leptin that inhibits the lateral hypothalamic neuron through the arcuate nucleus via the ventromedial nucleus. That means leptin actually stimulates the arcuate nucleus, which stimulates the ventromedial nucleus that ultimately inhibits the lateral hypothalamic nucleus. So most of times obesity is due to defect in the arcuate nucleus leptin receptor, due to which satiety is not obtained. In this case, the level of leptin is all right. because it is secreted in ample quantity by the adipose tissue but since its receptors are defective hence the leptin cannot act on the arcuate nucleus and this leads to uh, uh, obesity so now coming to the other theory the next theory is the gut peptide theory according to the gut peptide theory as we have already seen the gut peptides basically cck uh, and others they are responsible for uh, uh, satiety hence increase in the level of gut peptide causes satiety whereas decrease in the level of gut peptide causes hunger the last theory is the thermostatic theory according to the thermostatic theory when we are fasting our body temperature decreases slightly this is sensed by the posterior hypothalamus which stimulates the lateral hypothalamus and due to this our hunger increases four theories which are related to food intake they are basically the glucostatic theory lipostatic theory gut peptide theory and the thermostatic hypothesis so out of these if we come to the regulation of body weight and obesity the food intake regulation is basically of two types long term regulation and meal size regulation so the lipostatic theory is responsible for the long term regulation it controls the body weight in the long run whereas all other theories glucostatic gut peptide and thermostatic theory are responsible for meal size regulation and they are responsible for the short term regulation so forceful reduction in food intake which we also call dieting actually does not decrease the set point of weight our body is having a set point of weight hence once the dieting is stopped food intake increases and the body weight becomes the same as earlier even faster because the set point of the body is not changed by dieting also the resistance of leptin receptors is the main cause of obesity this we have already discussed it is very common in sedentary workers So finally the last topic the metabolic syndromes related to obesity so as we already know about them they include hyperlipidemia diabetes mellitus hypertension atherosclerosis orthopedic complication so this was basically the regulation of food intake by the hypothalamus so if you like the video please like uh, comment and give us your views what we can improve and in which areas we can uh, uh, give more content and how we can present it better thank you